Hey, what's going on guys? This is Richard with Salt Strong, and today I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about a slip float rig. And as you can see, I've actually got two separate ones here. One's kind of your standard popping cork, and then another is a pull float. And today I'm gonna be going over everything, including all the terminal tackle that I use, all the way down to the knot, so that way you, know, you have all the information that you need to make sure you're gonna be successful using a slip float on the water. So let's go ahead and get into it, and first off, off, let's start with kind of your standard rig here with is a little bit more of a popping cork. So I want to go ahead and go over everything from the line all the way down to the hook. So starting off guys, I use 15 pound braid. So I use 15 pound here because, you know, there's a lot of structure. I'm fishing around docks, you know, rocks, a lot of oysters and things like that. And I might be trout fishing, but I could also catch a very big redfish as well. So I really like that 15 pound braid. So going down the system, guys, you can see right here, it's a little bit frayed, but this is what's considered your nail knot. So this knot right here, the whole purpose of it, as you can see, it'll slide back and forth on your braid, but the purpose is this is gonna be where your depth is. So this is what's gonna stop this entire system um, from coming up your line. So that way you can really have an adjustable depth on where you're fishing. Um, if fish are suspended, you can figure it out pretty quick. So right here, what I've got, um, I have these bobber stops. You can use uh, anything you like. I also use in a pinch like 40 pound braid from some of my offshore rigs, but I do like something that's got a little bit more of a high vis, like a green or yellow, or just something that you can see pretty easy. The reason why is that way you can kind of visually see how you know deep uh, you're gonna be or when you're moving it up and down. You can see as well when this cork starts to slide up, making sure it's stopping and kind of doing what it needs to do. But these are very simple, very cheap to buy as well. All you need to do is see this little black plastic piece right here. This just slides over your main line. It's super simple. You put it over and then you can just slide off this kind of, it's almost like a yarn material. It's super soft and it'll you know go through your guides no problem. It's really easy. But as soon as you slide that off, all you have to do, there's two little strings attached. You can pull those tight and then you're left with a really nice little nail knot here. And uh, you can slide this back and forth and basically that's what's gonna stop your system. So going down next, guys, I have a bead. And same thing, the purpose of this bead right here is to stop right here at this knot. So that way, you know, your knot doesn't, you know, go through like a bigger hole on something like this. Um, the beads that I, you know, really like, these are super cheap. It doesn't matter which ones you use, but I do like something that's a little bit smaller in diameter, like a five millimeter or six millimeter, because that way you're a lot less likely to have you know, one of these beads go over your knot. If the diameter of the hole right here in the bead is too big, it'll slide over this knot, then your whole system's not really effective. So these little glass beads, you can pick up a bunch of them for really cheap, but that's gonna really help your system stop right there at the knot. All right guys, so moving down to the cork, this is just a uh, super simple. You can buy these at any tackle store, Walmart, it doesn't matter. Um, they're super cheap. I think they're like 30 cents a pop, um, but they work great. You know, they're really good. Um, and like I said, I really like using these um, for live bait fishing, especially when I'm fishing in about six feet of water or less. So another thing with this, you can see this got these slits in it here. Don't mess with any of that. Go ahead and put your braid straight through uh, that hole right here and it's gonna come all the way through this plastic piece. So there's no you know, pinching down or anything like that. The cork stays like this the entire time and that braid just goes all the way through um, to where it can slide up easily you know, up and down your system. All right, so moving down, I do have another bead here before I get to the swivel. You don't need one, but I like it. It also kind of helps protect the end of your little plastic right here, because this can come down and hit that metal, and over time it will wear it out. And I much rather wear out a bead rather than you know the cork, even though this whole system's really, really cheap. It's just something to think about. 
So moving down to the knots, guys. So what, it doesn't matter what knot you use. I really like using an improved clinch. Um, any type of friction knot, as you can see, like this one doesn't really move around the swivel. You really gotta kinda pull on it. You want something that's gonna kinda stick out and it's, that's really gonna help your system stay straight on this swivel. So make sure you've got a, some type of friction knot. I, like I said, I use the uh, improved clinch. I really like that one. It served me really well over the years. Um, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it type of thing. But you guys can use which one you want as well on that. So moving down to the swivel, uh, this is actually a micro swivel. You don't have to have one of these. Um, I'll show you. So this is just a, a VMC swivel. These are really good. They're super small, really strong. I actually use these a lot for spoons and kind of lure fishing as well. I just had a few extra laying around and I used it for this. Um, but this is a really light rig, so you know you can use this, and you can also go and use one of these, you know, Spro swivels as well. These work really good too, and I actually have that on this pole float. Um, but this is a really good one um, as well. Just make sure you get some that are not gonna, you know, rust up and be real cheap on you. So get something like a VMC or a Spro. Uh, they work really well. Going down to this, guys. So I have about roughly 12 inches of monofilament. Uh, the knot here is the exact same. I use, again, a friction knot, the improved clinch, uh, and it works, like I said, really, really well. So I like using that. But this 30 pound, um, this is 30 pound mono, I use a little bit more um, than 20, because like I said, a lot of times I'm fishing around structure and things like that. So having a little extra insurance really helps you out. Um, but only about 12 inches. You do not want this very long between the hook and the swivel. Um, 12 inches is usually plenty. So going down to the weights, guys, again, you can use any type of weight you want. These are just some pinch-on weights. Uh, bullet weights also work really well. Um, I've used that quite a bit, but I had a few of these laying around. Um, these are just your you know, Eagle Claw size three i put two of them on because when i was using this earlier i was fishing a little bit deeper um, and i wanted a little bit more weight um, but usually as long as you've got about a quarter ounce or so that usually works pretty good um, for this rig you don't want to overweight this rig because you know this is not a very big cork so if you have too much uh, weight on it it's going to kind of affect it and it's not going to really per perform quite as well all right, guys, so moving down past the weights, the pinch on weights, one other thing I did want to mention with these is out of your 12 inches, you really want these about halfway up, so about six inches or even a little bit less, because if these weights start to come up too close to the swivel, what's going to happen is when you throw it, um, they're going to get a little bit tangled up. It's not going to fly correctly. You're going to get some helicoptering and things like that. So make sure that these bullet weights are a little bit closer down here to your hook. Um, and that's really going to help with your casting. So definitely make sure you do that because if not, you're going to get a lot more tangles up here, especially with, you know, a heavier bait like a big shrimp or something like that on your hook. So moving in towards the hook, um, guys, this is a very simple, simple hook. This is just a three-aught. I really like these Eagle Claws. Um, these are really, really sharp, just like I said, a three-aught, but make sure that they're an octopus hook. An octopus hook is just a phenomenal live bait hook, but these L2 needle points are great. They're super sharp. Um, that's the main thing. Make sure you've got an octopus hook and that they're very sharp and you're gonna get a lot of catches. I mean, you can see just how this hook here has got a little bit of an offset. You can see that there. And I'm telling you, a lot of times these fish get hooked on their own um, before you even really um, you know, set the hook. And you really don't have to set the hook hard with this. Sometimes you can just reel straight down and just put a little bit of pressure on it because these things are so super sharp. They get stuck, you know, right there in the corner of the mouth or in the top of the mouth perfect almost every time. Um, these hooks work great. And again, this knot here is just going to be another improved clinch. It's one of my favorite and it works really, really well. So going off of that, guys, I will go over a few pros and cons of this rig here. So 
Pros, it, as you saw, it's very, very cheap to rig. It's not expensive. You can make a bunch of these, um, even have a few of them pre-rigged. And in that way, you know, you can, if you break off, you've already got a few ready for you. But this is very light as well. So if you're fishing in very shallow water, I really like using this rig in about six feet or less. This is the go-to. The reason why is because I've thrown, you know, this cork in a foot and a half, two feet of water, and almost immediately, you know, gotten a strike. It doesn't spook the fish near as bad as say one of these like heavier rigs, like one of these pole floats. So that's a really big pro uh, for this rig. However, there are some cons. And the biggest con with this is it's, it's a light rig. So if you are throwing in kind of a windy condition or windy day, this is gonna be a lot tougher. Um, and I'll tell you right now, do not throw this into the wind because you're probably going to get a big helicopter going on. And it's going to get tangled up. So it is a little bit difficult to throw uh, with wind. And just in general, since it is so light, it is going to be a little bit limiting on distance as well. But typically when I'm using this rig, I'm in, you know, back creeks fishing for trout and reds. And like I said, about six feet or less. This is a really, really solid rig. It doesn't spook fish, um, and I've caught a lot with it. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on, and we'll go on to the pole float. So this is the same exact concept, guys. There's a few different things on some terminal tackle that I will go over, but it's the same concept. So starting off, again, I've got 15-pound braid, and you just go right down here, and there's my sliding nail knot the same exact one as it, as it was on the uh, popping cork float. And then from there, I have a bead, same exact one. So same system all the way to here. Now, this is a pole float. So when I start to think about using this setup, I'm gonna be in more, you know, deep water situations, you know, and I've even fished all the way to 12 to 15 feet with this rig and I've caught fish down deep. Um, it's really, really good and effective, but this is about a 10 inch float here. Uh, you can buy these again at almost any tackle store, Amazon, it doesn't matter. They're all pretty good, um, but make sure that uh, you have a float that's really gonna be under you know three quarters of an ounce because a lot of these are weighted. Um, so I try to get about three quarters of an ounce or less because I do use a pretty heavy weight and I'll get to that in a second. So that's all it is for the standard float. Now coming down, you can see I've got this little piece of kind of rubber tubing right here. And the reason I do this is these floats here are a little bit more expensive. You know, they're probably anywhere from, you know, three to $8, depending on which one you get. And what this rubber tubing does is it comes down here to your swivel and it actually protects this float because if you know over time this little plastic piece right here it's not super hard it'll start to get smashed in you know over constant wear and tear when it's hitting this metal on the swivel so i do like putting this little piece of rubber uh, you could put another bead here as well that would work but the rubber works great um, and you know it it really kind of saves your cork since these are a little bit more expensive so moving down to the knot, same knot as I use on the popping cork float, uh, just that friction knot and improved clinch and it worked really, really well. And going to this guys, this is a, a swivel weight. Uh, this one I believe is just an ounce and a quarter. Um, it's pretty heavy, but like I said, I use this at you know, usually six feet or more of depth, and I can use this all the way down to really 15 feet, maybe even more um, if I need to, um, especially if I'm gonna be fishing over a lot of structure or rocks and just nasty stuff on the bottom. This is a really good alternative. So I really like having a heavier weight because what it does is just immediately put your uh, bait down in the strike zone very quickly and the other thing is when you're fishing that deep, you know, and you've got a lot of waves or wind or things like that, this heavier weight really straightens out your system. You know, there's not a lot of play in it because it's got a lot of weight pushing down on it. And even though like I said this is an ounce and a quarter, that's no problem for these pole floats. They are super buoyant. 
um, and, and you can really fish you know, pretty deep with them and have no problem. Going down here, same thing, got the same exact knot, guys, uh, improved clinch. And then again, I've got about 12 inches of 30 pound mono. Um, you, like I said, you can use anything you like, whatever you're comfortable and confident in, but I catch fish all year long with mono and it's, I usually use it 90% of the time, even on my live bait stuff. So I've got about 12 inches right here. You don't want this to be too long because if you do have bait, especially, you know, shrimp or minnows or anything that's going to be able to move around on you, you want to make sure that it's a little bit closer to the weight and that's going to help a lot with keeping your bait, you know, in the strike zone. And when you do get a hit, you're going to be able to see it respond on your cork a lot better. Um, but if you have too long of a leader, it's going to start allowing that bait to move around too much and it's going to be a little harder for the fish to get for one and you know, you're going to probably miss some strikes. So no more than about 12 inches on this, uh, this leader here. All right. And going down here, the same exact knot on these guys, improved clinch. I do not want a loop knot on this. The reason why, especially with live bait is if you have a loop knot, this is going to start getting all tangled up because that, that shrimp can kick or the fish can swim around and you're going to start getting a lot of foul ups with this. So make sure you've got some type of knot that's going to, you know, be some type of friction knot, like an improved clinch or whatever you guys like. And that's going to help you a lot with not getting hung up. Now going into some pros and cons with this, First off, the pros are going to be you get a ton of casting distance with this, guys. I mean, you can chunk this thing out there um, and really, I mean, you can get over 100 feet um, even with live bait with this and it, it's just a heavy, heavy rig. But it also is really, really good if you're in kind of rough weather. There's a, a lot of a surface ripples and things like that. This really does well in that and if you're having to throw a little bit into wind or anything like that this is really really good also you know like i said i like using this in deeper water scenarios and this is great in about you know i really try to cut it about six feet i mean you can use it in shallower but this is a really heavy rig and it makes a bit of noise when it lands but if you're fishing in six feet or more there is no issue at all um, using this. And like I said, this weight, this heavy weight will get your bait down into the strike zone very quickly and you're gonna be in a really good situation. For catching fish that are a little bit deeper or if they're over a bunch of nasty structure and things like that. So that's what I really like about this rig um, for fishing a little bit deeper. Uh, some cons for it, you know, if you are using it in some shallower water, it's gonna be loud. Um, you know, it's, it's gonna really spook some fish because, I mean, you've got, you know, a three quarter ounce possible, uh, you know, pole float here. Then you've got an ounce and a quarter or even an ounce weight. I mean, that's a lot of stuff gonna hit the water. So you really don't wanna use this in, you know, your shallower areas. But other than that, it casts really well. I do get less tangles with this rig as well compared to this one um, with the standard popping cork, just because it's a lighter rig compared to this. The heavy rig here, this really helps keep your system tight even when you're throwing it and you get a lot less helicoptering and all that stuff. But guys, this is a really, really good rig um, and I have used it around docks and pilings and just all kind of different things. And you can really fish deep with it and have a lot of good success. So that's it for today, guys. When we're talking about tips for slip floats, this is the way that I like doing it and it's worked very well for me over the years. But if you have any questions or if you also have any tips using slip floats, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And also, if you have any questions on this tackle, we do sell quite a bit of this at fishstrong.com. So be sure to go there and check it out as well. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club for saltwater anglers, especially if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it, and we actually guarantee that you'll catch more fish while saving time and money. We do this with our premium education, the exclusive insider community, and huge discounts on all the tackle you need. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.